Hello and welcome back to Hobby Fist Place Dota 2. This time we are playing Spirit Breaker. And the role we're playing this time is basically the wander around, run into everybody, set up team fights type of style for Spirit Breaker. Now there are a lot of different ways you could play him. A lot of different builds, a lot of different uh, things to spec up when you first start playing it. However, this one is just going to be focusing completely on running all over the goddamn map because that's kind of what spirit breaker does so let's get right into it we're going to talk about all of his abilities and these are it's a little complex because certain spells work better or abilities work better once they've actually had other spirit breaker abilities have been leveled along with it too i'll explain that especially with the first ability which is his pretty much makes him him it's uh charge of darkness uh, Spirit Breaker fixes sight on an enemy unit and starts charging through all objects. An enemy unit passes through and... All enemy units, excuse me. Units pass through and the targeted unit will be hit by a greater bash. If the target unit dies, Spirit Breaker will charge. Change his target to the nearest enemy unit to that location. Now, the ally units uh, get hit by a greater bash only works if you actually have that skill leveled. So, usually when you start the game, if you're playing it the way I did, you can kind of... Switch in between having either one of these two be leveled first. It really depends on what how you're going to play the lane or how you're going to play on the map. And since we kind of already had to an off laner and the already had a good lockdown on the top lane, as you'll see when we get into the video, it made more sense just to level this first because it's one and a half second stun duration. And you want to use the, this is how you all usually want to start fights is with him laning this and then you follow it up with all the other stunts afterwards unless they start getting away and you're like oh we might not get the kill as i think one of the first or second actual attempt we had in the game will show sometimes it's better to have something else lead into you charging it now the way this works is you can charge literally anything on the map that you have vision of so it could be on the exact opposite side of the map as long as you have vision on it say it's through like Bloodseeker and somebody's got super low health, you get vision through that. Bounty Hunters tracked anybody. Doesn't matter how you can see them, as long as you can, you can charge to them. Now, there is a bit of a cast time before you can actually get it off. I believe it's, uh, I think the math runs out to 0.47 seconds after you hit Q and the target you want. So if you hit Q and in between him sitting there getting ready to charge and him actually doing it, you lose sight. It, the spell doesn't go off. If you're playing against uh, Spirit Breaker and you know that he doesn't really have good vision on you, as long as you just keep hiding in like tree lines or keep breaking vision of him, he can't charge you. That's uh, just a thing to keep in mind if you're actually fighting against him. This may seem a, maybe a bit confusing if like this is one of the first times you're seeing into the game and you're like, how? what the hell is this character? How do I play him? What happened? This guy ran at me. How does this work? Uh, in the game, it may be easier to understand by actually seeing it. Second ability, Empowering Haste causes Spirit Breaker to gain power with higher movement speed. His presence increased the movement speed of all nearby allied units. You can cast this to improve the movement speed bonus for 6 seconds. However, afterwards the pass passive bonus will be halved while the ability is on cooldown. So this is an aura you can have and if you press the button it gives more of a bonus. But once the 6 second duration is gone, that uh, bonus is half. Say at first ability 6%. After you've casted it, the bonus movement speed would be down to six, uh, 3%. Radius is pretty big at 900. Uh, maybe it'll show it when I mouse over it in the map. It gives a pretty good indication as, like, 900, that's a real kind of ambivalent because you really have no basis of measurement when you're seeing this game, so it's better just to mouse over the ability, and it usually will show you its actual range. But 600 is pretty decent. Uh, 900, I mean. So his third ability, Greater Bash. Gives a chance to stun and not back on enemy units on attack, as well as getting bonus movement speed after the bash occurs. Deals a percentage of movement speed as damage. So what that means as far as deals a percentage of movement speed as damage is the faster you actually move, the more damage you do. So you can think about getting items that will boost your move speed, even if it's for a temporary amount of time. Things like phase boots. You can do wind lace. Uh, you can do Yasha, I believe, is another move uh, speed. Maybe Sanjin Yasha. I don't remember. I have to actually look at the tooltips for the stuff. The only way that you'll get this greater bash on the like the greater bash when you're charging through things if you actually have this level. Otherwise, you just pass through things, as you'll probably see once the game starts. But uh, a little 
tip you can do is say you're about to charge something is you can kind of cheat the math or cheat the system, so to speak. If you hit, I believe it's either three or four like creeps or anything, and you haven't gotten a bash, I think it's four. If you do that and then you charge something, it's pretty much a guarantee that you will bash them when you actually run into them. Again, it's you're, you're kind of doing the math to cheat it a little bit or stack it in your favor, so to speak. Uh, the, the joke usually is that the, it seems way higher than 17% or you never get it when you want it. It's just, it's it's a random thing, but it does pierce uh, spell immunity. So it does land on things with uh, Black King Bar. Uh, it also goes through Lincoln Sphere because it's not a casted thing. It's just a passive that you have. And then his ultimate is Nether Strike. He slips into the Nether Realm, reappearing next to his hapless victim. Upon reappearing, Greater Bash of the current level occurs and deals bonus damage, which is upgradable by, upgradable by the Scepter. I believe it does an AoE. The, what it means by piercing spell immunity is, is the magic damage doesn't hit, which I believe comes from the uh, uh, Greater Bash, but the actual stun and knockback still lands on him. Uh, but usually what you do here is you charge... And then after the stun lands, maybe this will hit. And then once that's going down, you cast this. But you'll notice is the cast time for this, it's it's pretty it's pretty long. It's real easy to get stunned. And you'll totally see that as one of the times. It's one of the more frustrating things is when you're trying to land a spell. Because uh, it takes 1.2 seconds after you cast it for it to actually land. There is a bit of a little wind-up, weird noise happens. And it's real easy to get, interrupt him when this is happening. As you'll see, somewhere in the middle of the game. And then I'll quickly go over the talent tree stuff. Now, if you're not really sure how to figure out, okay, what's the best talent to get for the game? I mean, it is situational. You kind of have to look at how the game goes, but you can also use a, uh, a guide to be like, what is the monetary equivalent when you think about it? Like is movement speed, if you try to find an item in the game that has 20 movement speed compared to the thing that has plus five all stats, and you can go, well, this thing costs way more, so it feels a better value pick. Since uh, I think it's a, yeah, a greater bash, you deal more damage with uh, movement speed. You feel like 20% movement speed is only going to help you uh, help you out in the long run. Talent tree, uh, the 15th one, uh, five armor, 20 damage. Again, uh, I do the math. I believe usually the better money value is 20 damage. Level 20, 30% greater bash damage. That's okay. 120 gold a minute depends on your roll. If you're kind of falling behind, which is a thing that happens a lot with me coming into the mid game, I usually fall off with items and levels. Kind of sucks. It's a part of my game I got to fix. Maybe you want to go with 120 gold. That's a pretty good passive gold generating ability instead of just the slow amount you get tick, you get per tick normally. Level 25, 500 charge speed or plus 17% greater bash chance. Uh, usually people go 500 charge speed. You go so goddamn fast. It's really hard to react against it. But 17% greater fast chance, I think it's usually 90 to 1 or 100 to 0 people get charge speed for this. How Charge of Darkness... I'll go over this real quick again for Charge of Darkness. This can be blocked by certain abilities or certain items you can buy. Link Sphere. The initial charge on it will pop it. But if someone pops it and then you charge on them and then the Lincoln Sphere comes off cooldown, you're still gonna get hit by it. BKB, I believe, blocks it as well. Yeah, it does not pierce spell immunity. So I do not believe you can charge anybody who has BKB on them. If you charge somebody who goes in Viz, okay, so the way it works, you'll see there's a little icon on the item you're chart the person you're charging, and say they're in Viz. You will see a little silhouetted outline of the person being in Viz, and it kind of lets everybody on the team know, hey, this is where the invisible guy is. But the second you hit him and you have no way of uh, popping detection either with dust or a sentry, you lose sight of him what uh, altogether. Now, going into the game, let's start this up. Uh, let's hit... Where's my play button? Here we go. Hit play. I'm on Spirit Breaker. So, everybody in this game, pretty much random, so I was able to get a lot more items than you would normally get when you're playing this. But usually you want to go uh, Orb of Venom because it will slow when you hit, so it gives the rest of the people on your team a better chance to actually follow up and 
kill them before they get away. Uh, clarity of some sort to help you replenish your mana after every charge because you see it is a hundred mana per charge so you can easily get off two of them before you're gonna have to wait whatever the math is 229 with 0.6 mana regen per second that's gonna be a long time so you're gonna need to have uh, some sort of mana regen to help you stay in the game and not always have to run back to base after every charge tangos and clarities just in case you get into some uh, failed gank and you gotta get out before you die. Stout shield will help as far as uh, the block chance when you're in lane against creeps or anything else hitting you. But if you can't afford this stuff, really the things you should try to look for usually is clarity of some sort. Obra Venom, if you can, definitely. Or if somebody else on the team already has one, then maybe you don't need to. But a thing to really keep in mind when you're playing Spirit Breaker is communication is one of the most important things to actually have this character work and your team work out fantastically. I happened that on this team, the Crystal Maiden up here had a mic. I didn't have mine turned on for this. She was like, hey, let's gank here. I was like, all right, sure. We'll totally do that. So as long as you're communicating all the time, even if there's that little icon, some people still don't understand or want to pay attention to it, type in chat. If you got a mic, tell people, hey, I'm going to charge here. Let's set up for this. Let's do this. All right, everyone, get ready. I'm charging down here now. See, I'm charging now. They have a little icon. After a certain point, I'm going to pause real quick here. After a certain point within you charging them, they either see you, but I believe they get a little icon above here that'll let them know, hey, someone's charging you. Um, but you want to also think about the ways to come at the person you're charging. Now, with a lot of other heroes in the game, too, with things like uh, Pudge's Hook, Marana's uh, Arrow, the thing that goes out in a stun, you want to try to attack people from an angle in which they won't be expecting it from. Now I charge kind of pretty obviously from over in this area. He was going to see me, so it didn't make much sense. You want to kind of either, if you can, come behind him from like maybe down here, come from this way. You got to come from a way they're not going to expect, so it's easier for you to land the stun Get the gank off. Make it work. Now, he pinged up top. This guy has super low health. Little icon on there. He said, hey, gank top. So I did a charge. But another thing that can happen a lot is you got to be careful of the angles you go. I ran through Roshan. And what Roshan can do is actually stun you with hits. And it happened that he smacked me as I ran through him. He told me, hey, don't go this way. So now I have to wait for it to come off cooldown. I got to wait to replenish the mana. He stayed in lane up here his health is about 50 percent so i thought about coming through this angle here but it was too close to tower i had to wait and also crystal maiden wasn't down here to get the kill so i was going to wait for her to show up because he was going to be a bit too durable for me and waver to actually kill him beforehand before he was actually able to get, come back so i pinged there hey i want to charge her she's still pulling the stack here to keep it under the tower for the weaver he hasn't shown yet, but this okay. He clearly made a mistake. He showed right here, so I was like, all right, we're going for this. So he stayed to fight. Bad idea. There's the stun. Stunned again. He stunned me, but he was held in place, so now I'm just going to try to stay on him, keep the over venom on him, keep him slowed. Now, he had decent health. I had charge back on, but they bailed. I felt that if they stayed here, he definitely was going to die, but they backed off. Again, it's a communication thing. I don't think I pinged here to say, hey, this is coming off cooldown. You want to let people know, hey, we can totally kill this guy. Just stick with me. Let's charge him. Let's kill him. But there'll be plenty of more chances for me to actually kill people on the map. But again, that's how you play this guy is you got to talk to your people on your team, set up fights, always be talking to people. Hey, my charge is going. My charge is coming off cooldown. Let's stick with him. Let's kill him. So we come back, come down to mid, and now we're going to try coming from a different angle so they weren't going to be able to see us come. If we charged the same way I did to start with, obviously we would have seen it. But I felt if we came this, no, yeah, I'm coming through the trees, real hard to see, can't react. We all dive them under the tower. We have plenty, enough stuns to hold them in place, and we kill them. So now I get to level 2, which gets me the bash. And again, the bash means that anybody I charge through will be hit with the stun and knock back. So... I'm charging back to top lane. He's staying in lane super low. I feel that by the time I get to him and stun him, she's going to be able to follow up and hold him in place. 
And then I got lucky after that stun, he saw that knockback, that's the greater bass chance. 17%. You'll feel like this thing is a higher than 17% chance, but again, got that kill. Look around the map again. I look down to mid. Uh, all these wards you can't see. This is because I have vision of both teams. I had no idea that these wards were here, but they don't see us coming this way up the, I think up the steps this way. They didn't see it or he wasn't paying attention. But again, Haste. me and CM are roaming around. Uh, we're waiting for Lena to come in. Again, I lead off with a charge. Right in place. He's not getting away. A couple of stuns. Even if that happens where there's the stuns, I'm going to make sure that I get in front. So if he tries to run away, he's going to be running into me. Again, kind of how you do it with Black and with Creeps. You just want to get in the way so everyone else on your team can actually get up there and hit him. Because I have such a long lineup with my attacks that, say I wanted to hit him, he would have been able to walk past me. So it was better that I actually sit there and block him so everybody else on my team can actually hit Honda him instead of me take the swing, gets way past me, gets another tower, loses sight, no way he can actually get killed by us. So again, another kill. This guy, has got pretty little health again. Charge, this, this feels like we can get this kill again. She's going to lead off. She's waiting for the stun. Land it. And then I got the bash again, and he's dead. So the reason this is working out so well, CM's talking, we're communicating, hey, let's wander around and gank people. This is how you can win Spirit Breaker games so well. Make sure that the people either in your lane or the people that you're ganking with has another form of stun to go along with you so the other person in the lane will get destroyed. We're kind of wandering around. This Chen and this team's pretty good. He got the fountain off, so he's gaining a bunch of health. It was like, ah, I don't think we're going to get this kill. He stayed a bit too long, waiting for this charge to come off cooldown. So I want to go for the Chen because, see, look at that knockback. That's what that having the greater bash up there will do. Got the kill. So now I feel like, okay, I'm going to get in front and try to stop them. I did a bad job of it. She dies. So I'm going to try to break line of sight. They'd f bother not trying to chase after me, which I felt they probably could have. Instead, they're trying to go for Weaver, and Weaver's a really hard kill to get unless you've got lots of lockdown on him. Failed gank. So the, usually what you do, you can kind of maybe get one point of this if you want. Not really important. You can kind of just bounce between maxing both of these out. Get your ultimate, then get this. It really depends on the lane you're playing. Say you're playing in the off lane down here and you're kind of by yourself. You can maybe start with that. Maybe you can go with the bash. Okay, I'm going to pause right there. Oh, I actually felt like they did see me. They dove way under tower. So I decided to call off the gank on that point. What you can do to stop you from charging is you can uh, hit S if you've got that actually marked uh, as a cancel all orders button through your options menu. Other things can stop you from uh, charge if you cast teleport in the middle of your charge, it'll stop it too. If anybody does any some, any sort of stun on you, that will work too. Anything that will stop you from being able to uh, knock you back in movement will stop you as well. See, then I get in front. That's real important to do is to make sure that you get in front to try to stop them from being able to get in, uh, where they're trying to go to help your team get up here and kill him. We had real good rotations on our team. Oh, so another thing that happens too with charge, I'll stop real quick with this. The, per the person you're charging happens to die. What happens next, you charge the next visible enemy. Not neutrals, because there were neutrals right behind us. And if that was the case, it would have just back turned right around and gone towards them. But since he died, it was in mid charge. It looked on the map for the nearest, closest uh, enemy from the other team, and it happened to be someone in the lane, so that's why I was charging, and I just ran off in some random direction. That's just how the, the spell is programmed within the game, that if the initial person you're charging at dies, goes for the next visible one. If there isn't one, I believe it's under a certain radius, you just stop. So now I have all out of uh, regen. Usually an item you go for next if you're ganking nonstop, or enough shadows to help you with mana regen, and also heal you between fights or start adding damage to who you're fighting to just help you kill them better or faster whatever you want to call it just stayed down in that lane she got dove on 
Uh, we m she wasn't level six, so I don't know if we were actually able to gonna kill him. So again, we're all three of us are down here. We're waiting until we get some vision. I'm going in to let everyone know. Hey, we're charging. We got the stun to start. That stun goes off. I hit another set of stun. Get in front. Get a good bash. But uh, that was a little too far in her tower. That was close. She had level six, but was too far away to get the duel off. We're all here to just keep her safe so she can back off. My now I've got my urn. So urn will do is it gives you modern regeneration. Real important for the character so you can keep charging. Attributes, good for um, just general stats. And then armor. That's uh, another... He's got decent armor to start. Six. That'll give me uh, top up to eight. I don't know the math on a mit mitigation. It'll probably say armor... 35% resistance to physical attacks. 25% is the base I think pretty much everybody has. So back into base, look around the map. You can use charge as a free teleport, but the only problem is the second it lands is when it comes off cooldown. So you can't hit this, charge across the map, and then when you hit, have it land again. You gotta wait 12 seconds after you've after the charge is completed or you cancel it. Then it goes back off cooldown. So again, looking around the map, we want to go push bottom because it feels like uh, Phantom Lancer down. Uh, Phantom Lancer, uh, Phantom Assassin. God damn it, I can't talk. Is down here by herself. We've got enough stuns and locked down. All four of us are down here now. Even with a bit of support, he he's not level six, so he can't kill. We had some bait. They dove in. We get the stun. We could probably could have killed. Yep, we got. He's trying to get the duel. Gets the duel off. See that? Uh, we got the kill. Start adding damage to him to guarantee that she gets the duel off. So every time you kill somebody, you get two charges of this. Go under tower. And you're hoping for the bashes. Didn't get one. Probably, yep, real soon. So it's pretty obvious with this with uh, playing Spirit Breaker. It's pretty chaotic. A lot of diving. He, a lot of attacks. And the urn helps you stay in lane. Helps you get kills, fight. Stay there. Just harass. Real strong start of the game. 11 to 2. Bunch of kills top lane to help him get farm and levels over uh, Wraith King. We come down to mid. We get, uh, ganked mid a bunch to help our mid get levels and farm. It's another form of support you could think, but it's it's more fun. You're just charging all over the goddamn place. Hey, I'm going here. I'm going here. Let's fight. Let's kill. You just got to make sure that when you're doing it, everybody on your team is totally committed and willing to do it. See, he's out of vision now, but since he was in the vision long enough for me to actually get there, I'm charging. No one wanted to commit, so I stopped. And I got a free teleport to mid. Now I'm just going to sit here and farm a bit. After this point, you can go for uh, boots of speed. You can get phase boots. Generally, people get boots of speed just to help with attack speed. But you can also go face boost and I believe right before you land on a charge you can activate your face boost to get a bonus move speed and again bonus move speed helps with bash damage but usually people power shreds just because it's a uh, just a generally good item to get so we, we're looking here he was level past level 6 so he has his ultimate us both were going to be able to kill him but we kind of wanted to at least get his ult on cooldown. So I'm kind of wandering up the top lane to kind of protect her if they go on her. But this is another issue part of the game where everyone on my team is level 6 except me because I'm wandering around so much. If we have one more person, we could definitely kill him. So I'm waiting to see if we get anybody to teleport up here. Someone probably should have. I pinged it out. She's like, hey, come on, somebody. Uh, she got haste, I believe, maybe at this point. She, Yep, she's teleporting up here. So I'm going to start it off with a charge. He did not back up in time. I need vision. She's going to stun. Stuns off. I land this, this. Lands this. And now we're just going to try to kill him. The ult's... Okay, his ult's off. Now we needed to back up, but now he's ready to fight. So we got the stun. My stun's off. Keeping him chain locked so he can't leave. But... He didn't get a bash. And... Then Chen was here with all of his Chen creeps just to f block us from being able to actually follow under the tower. But CM felt a little too committed. 
And... Nope, didn't get the kill. My charge just came off cooldown, but he died, so... Now, yep, he got his ult, and I'm pretty much dead here. But, yeah, that was my ult. You see how long of a windup that is? In between him doing that stand-up roar thing, and I'm actually landing, you can do any sort of stun you want, and he won't be able to actually uh, cast it. Any roots work as well, so I think if you have Rod of Atos, that will stop him from doing it. But if you have something like uh, Invoker with Cold Snap, where every time he gets you get hit, you get a mini stun for 0.5 seconds for a set amount of time, uh, pretty soon you'll see that happen to me. Where I sit here just non-stop trying to cast the goddamn thing, but I keep getting erupted by stuns. Uh, now at this point, I've got the urn, i got my treads. We're coming into the jungle, we're going to ward up to see if we can't get any kills. Three of us are down here. Well, actually four of us. Oh, we spot somebody. And now I'm charging right on her. And she's pretty much dead. Got the urn on her. She's not getting away. No. Uh, yep. Just confirmed the kill there. You move like a blue heart glacier. So once we've invaded the jungle enough times, they'll get real worried about coming down here to actually farm anything. Because we've always been down here. We're everywhere on the map. Real active, moving around. No one's really feels safe to farm anywhere. And you want to keep that pressure up until the game's over. If you let up at any point, they let the people on their team catch up in levels and items, which eventually happens in the mid-game because we kind of laxed off. I don't know what the hell I'm doing now. Top tower is under attack. I'm kind of just aimlessly wandering around. I should probably just stuck in mid. Probably either get levels, farm a little bit. Because I am... Level 7. Well, I'm tied with the lowest level. But I just wandered up to top lane, and now I'm wandering back down to middle lane. I need. I should have, like, picked a spot. I'm kind of looking around the map to see if there's anybody we can kill, but no one's in range of here. These people are smoking into the jungle down here, so I'm kind of just looking around, see if they spot anybody. Yep, they, they spotted somebody. Now I'm going to charge. Get ready. They got vision. I'm charging now. So hopefully by the time I get down here... We can get the kill, but this is a deep dive. Landed the stun, and now he's dead. And then we may have stayed too long. This... She did survive, but died real close to that. Now, when you can usually use this ultimate, it's it's kind of debatable when you want to. But we've got another team fight here. I'm just going to run at people, bash them, stun them. I got lucky with two bashes in a row there, and now he's dead. And then Chen's just gonna hang around here. But then we're like, hey, let's kill all of his creeps. So then we all come in here, keep them all locked, get all that money. Now, when you want to use this ultimate as another strike, you can either do one or two things with it. If you want to just keep him stun locked, you can do it the second after you land, or you can coordinate with your team to be like, all right, he's when he starts running away, that's when I'm gonna cast it. Because it's got a pretty decent uh, lock, 700. You see how far, if they're within that, he lands it. So if I mouse over, oh, I haven't leveled it yet, but when I mouse over it, this is 700. So 900 is 200 more than that. So that's a pretty decent sized aura in the uh, in the game, if anybody's around you. But usually what happens is right before you uh, land your charge, you activate this because it gives you bonus move speed. And again, that buffs your bash chance. So... Gank their jungle again. Now I'm kind of setting up. We're wandering around. I'm going to grab that double damage. Look to see if you can't double find anybody. Damage. Oh, we got vision of Wraith King. Is anybody going to want to commit to this? Nope, no one did. I charged, so I canceled the second because it was a bit of a dive. We didn't have enough vision around here, and they all could be down here, kind of like they were when we went on in that last time. And again, his ultimate might be up, and that would just... If we committed it to try to kill him twice, that's plenty of time for anybody on the team to actually get over there and back him up and then again the chain I got two lucky bashes and then try to run up wait uh, this that's his ult could be nasty would so I'm gonna try to save from behind because they're running on her we got vision long enough so now I'm gonna charge in he's dead yep and then he tried committed a bit too much yep they dove a bit too hard we had enough stuns, and then we're like, oh fuck, that's PA. Am I going to try to help this? 
So, thankfully, up, oh, Decorator Bash got for the person who happened to be in the back line. Was able to stun him on the way to get to her. Which is another thing to keep in mind is when how to use this spell. If you want the most be the most disruptive, if you can, go for the person in the back line. Usually those are the real squishy guys. And if they're all clustered together and you charge right through, you stun everybody on their team if they're not BKB. But again, it's all about positioning. We, you saw how we ended up dealing with uh, Wraith King when he came back. I got in front and then charged back so that when I landed the stun, he would have been knocked backwards towards our side of the map, farther away from where he wants to go. Just helping the team actually uh, solidify the kill, whatever the word is. So at this point, uh, another real good item to get on... Uh, Spirit Breaker, if you're having some more mana issues, is you get the uh, Echo Saber. Let me bring that up here. You see. So Echo Saber, it gives, it's great stats all around. More damage, more mana regeneration. But the special thing with this guy is that you, after uh, five second cooldown, you attack in succession real fast which helps you with uh, chances of actually landing a greater bash. So every five seconds it goes on cooldown, and after five seconds you hit real fast, real quick, and it uh, applies a 100% uh, movement slow, which is great. And again, really helps if you have um, highly mobile heroes or people who are in Viz who can scout for you. Even if you have wars up, as long as you got vision, all you gotta do is just charge at them and they all die. So now we're just going to try to kill all of his creeps so they can't get away. This may have been a bit too much of a commitment, but again, I've got 6.1 mana regen. It's not too much of an issue. Uh, probably by the time Empowering Haste comes back online, I'll have plenty of mana. Mana mana. You know, it's however you want to say it. It's semantics at this point. So now uh, I've got a few more items just... Trying to farm up this. Let's get this off the screen. There we go. So we got a kill. Now we're going to try to get a tower here. I'm hanging back so they don't see me charge at them if we actually commit. He committed a bit too much. And this was like, ah, this is under tower. Let's let's back up. They're all here for this. But we really wanted to continue the fight. Might not have been a great idea. So she's just casting stun to make sure her attack speed stays up. We're going to wait for the next wave. Had a catapult. And then Weaver got a bit ambitious and now I'm debating are we are we gonna save this we we just need to get out we could have committed and dove in for that but then I would have died and sometimes maybe that's what you should do as playing kind of a support you're roaming around it's more important that you protect your core so they don't lose all their money if it comes down to it you're the bodyguard you'll you'll take the shot for them so at this point I'm actually doing something somewhat productive trying to at least farm I move my treads to agility so I'll attack faster a golden but as you see he's not the fastest even unless you get lucky with a bash you don't kill creeps all that fast so now we're regrouping killing some uh, jungle creeps the waves ah there's a decent wave up here I maybe could go to that farm that they're all clustered here uh, the other team scanned and found that um, we're in that area, but if you're actually the only person in there fighting Roshan, that thing doesn't get ticked. You have no idea if anybody's in there. That's not how scan works. So they're going for Roshan. I decided to stay a bit away, so if they actually do try to go and contest this, I'll be there to charge in and disrupt the fight if they're doing it. Although, maybe I could be in a lane. I can charge towards it, and I put a scan down just to see if they're going to make any attempt to actually stop us from fighting this. Because we already have a ward here and a ward here. It made sense to maybe ward in this area here, so if we can try to catch them, if maybe they come around this way, or way around. Who knows? Again, this is a bug. I actually don't have... We don't have vision of that. There's no ward here. It's just what happens sometimes with replays. So now that we have the Aegis, which means she dies, comes right back to life, we're going to push the last two towers outside their base. And this didn't turn out to be a really good fight for us. You'll see 
me and the frustration of trying to land that spell. Oh, we'll mouse over this real quick just so you can see it. Yeah, it's pretty decent sized radius. I have the camera moved not on me over in the area where I want to charge into. I don't really need to have it on myself. I just need to have vision over. I should have it actually have vision here more. Up oh, so if they commit on this, I'm going in. They committed. I saw that Chain Frost got casted. Apparently, I didn't feel like this was a good enough of attempt to go in. Maybe we should have. But they also used two big ults there. So now we're going to wait for the next wave. Go right back in. We have less to worry about. Chain Frost is down. They got their big heal off. So now I'm going to hang back. Look for someone maybe to go on in the back here. Or a really important target like Chen. Stun, stun. And now I'm trying to cast and I'm done. Stop. Stunned. And then I finally land it way too late. And then I'm just kind of in here. And then I get, he came back to life because that's what his ultimate does. And he killed me. But they had plenty of lockdown here to... Yep, and then he died. So in the end, um, I was frustrated as hell trying to land that stupid spell. But we may have... Actually, no, this was... <laughs> Oh, yeah, I forgot we hung around way too long. CM, you're dead. Chen's gonna come back. And then I believe she may get away. She's gonna land the stun. And then she thought about it. Nope, she was smart. Got out. So in the end, uh, we may have overcommitted a bit too much. And we lost, I think at the end, I think it was four to five, maybe six. If you count the... Using his reincarnate, maybe it was seven. But a little too much overcommitment. So now I'm only 120 away from getting the Echo Saber. Uh, as far as levels go, I am way behind everyone. Oh, Chen's lower than me, but this is a part of the game where I end up having a lot of issues. I'm either not farming enough to get levels, or not ganking enough. I mean, I do have. I'm in 23 of the 26 kills we have, so it's not that I'm not farming enough. I mean, you do get money from killing people, but maybe this time should be spent better actually maybe doing what I'm doing, but staying in lanes. I got my Echo Saber, but you'll see I'm going to attack, and then two quick success, uh, attacks in succession. However, the cooldown on this is two seconds, so you're not going to get two greater bashes in a row. That's not how it works. Uh, I was in the area. We all collapsed on Phantom Assassin down here. They see the charge. Um, but I'm committed at this point and dead. And then he wasn't able to get land the stun before I was able to land my ultimate. So now we got the kill. Let's back the fuck out. I did endurance run to help everybody in my group run faster for a set amount of time. But then now it's on cooldown, we only get three, uh, actually 5% because it's level 2. So now we're just getting out. I mean, Weaver maybe is harassing him maybe a bit too much, but it's Weaver. He can get, he has really good escape. In other parts of the world, Lena got a kill on Chen with the help of Legion Commander. So now I'm going back, gonna grab a rune. I don't know why. Oh, it is up. Never mind. All of these runes uh, spawn again every two minutes. It helps you with some gold, get some levels. So now I'm back here again. These are probably the easiest uh, jungle creeps in the game to kill. They don't really do much to you. Just farming these. Another thing also that can help is make sure you're not, not being seen on the map. So say they're staring at you and you're farming up here. Then you charge. Hey, I see him charging. Everyone back off. But if they don't see you anywhere on the map then they won't be able to actually react to you. So sometimes if you're charging, you're all the way down here and you charge up here, you gotta kind of look at the line you're going to actually run at them. Say you go right across mid, these two are fighting here. Real obvious to see you just zoom right across the screen and be like, uh, he's charging top. And they're like, oh shit, get back under tower. So while it's fantastic, you can run a charge all over the map may not be a smart idea to go across real common ward areas which are around this area here over here but if you come from like strange angles they aren't really uh expecting front to 
expect you to come from, that's another thing that you can use to your benefit. Say you were trying to fight under this tower here, if you came from behind this way, they didn't expect that. Whereas if you came directly from their side, they're looking that way anyway, they're going to see you. Again, other things, things just to keep in mind. Next item I'm going for now is, uh, I believe it's a Hal Heaven's Halberd, yep. This thing gives you evasion, gives you damage, but the real important thing is you cast this on somebody on their team. They aren't able to physically attack you for five seconds. Yeah. This is just to help uh, fighting either of these two. It does not go through BKB, but... Now I'm going on a real squishy target. Arguably, maybe I should have wanted someone way in the back, so I could have just disrupted them all. But you saw I was he cast the thing that made me unarmed, which is what the Halberd does, but I was still able to cast my attacks. I just wasn't actually able to physically attack him. That was a way too much of a commitment to fight that. She wanted to get the duel off, but uh, Lich was in the middle of his entire team, especially had Invoker not locked, stunned, or any way that because I didn't charge him. He had no way of actually uh, being interrupted, casted a bunch of spells, helped his team win. So that was a 2-4 to four fight, I think. Again, it was, things to think about is, yeah, you charged Lich. He's the squishiest person on the team, but you saw him back into the rest of his team, and you weren't able to stun a bunch of people on the way there. Uh, it's just things you got to think about if you're actually about to cast the spell to be like, should I wait a sec? He is backing up. His The rest of his team has to be there. Maybe it makes more sense to go at someone else and stun on the way through. Like, yeah, he's an important guy to fight because of his ultimate, but this guy casts way more annoying spells. So if you can just keep him locked down from being able to do anything, it's going to help, your, help your team out more. So I got invisible, pinged Chen the second I had it, and everybody on my team was like, yep, let's do it. So I'm going to be the first one to land it. I'm going to have this stun, but he has Yules, so my initial stun didn't work. But I stunned, and we got the kill. And yeah, see, he was able to get a bunch of spells off. Yeah, we got that kill, but we are paying dearly for it now. It is an honor to be chosen for death. Uh, I'm not watching the action because I don't know what I was doing at this point. I was like, ah, that wasn't a smart idea. And also, he had one of his spells is a knockback, which does the disarm, but I was right next to somebody else, so Chain Frost just bounced back between me and her just nonstop and just guaranteed our death. It was a pretty, uh, pretty good combo that Volker had against us. So... I'm just buying this because, again, I am level 15. I mean, I am the lowest on my team by level and a half. But I'm kind of a roaming support. It's going to be hard to get some money, but... So you want to try to keep up as best you can. Look around the map. I'm charging this as... See, he's invisible right now. They cannot um, attack him. Until if I was to actually charge him and cast dust, then they can. It's just showing a, a silhouette showing this is where the invis guy is running to. If you either have some sort of detection yourself or just happen to stun like an area stun where he is, you'll stop him from moving. But without any sort of detection, you're not going to be able to attack him. So he backed off. I just used the charge as a free charge to get somewhere on the map. Looking down bottom to see if Invoker actually shows down there. I'm going to charge on him, but everybody is kind of clustered up here. I'm looking at Chen. Chen's wandering around himself. I was like, this would be a great target to go on. But if I was to land, be the charge there, everybody on my team, it would take way too long to get down to him. Everybody on the team could react and teleport to a near, nearby space next to him, which they did in the last fight we had. So I said, eh, it wouldn't be a good idea to do that. So I got invis rune, the invisible invisible ugh, the, I'm invisible. I can't talk. I'm kind of wandering around their side look for someone to attack, realize everyone's over here. I'm going right on invoker now. Up oh, he used Yules now. So I'm like, "Hey, now you got no way of getting away from me." Land a stun on Chen so I can just make sure he dies fast. And then again this stupid chain frost. That's 
Real nasty spell. Backing up. He dove way too far, so now he's going to die. And on the way of trying to kill him, I'm going to cast this so I can get regen. 155 HP per second. Now I'm just playing Runaway. Got stunned a bunch. It's off cooldown. I'm thinking about if I go back in. I'm like, ah, uh, yep, I'm going to do it. We got enough damage here. Yep, he just melts. So now we're, I'm getting harassed by all of Chen's creeps. And then Lena's going to clean him up. Using the urn to heal myself up so I don't have to run back to base. And I'm looking to see if there's any chase. There's definitely should be... We should be able to kill him. I've got detection for it. And thankfully I didn't get bashed this time. He didn't react fast enough. Kept the dust on him. He can't get away. Although he can use. And I think that does get rid of his... Uh, gets rid of dust on him. But he was dead. So now they only have two alive in their team. Now we can go after... Roshan to get the uh, next Aegis that's up. I probably, I was debating whether or not to go in there and fight, but I felt I'd be better actually moving up there to scout. Roshan has fallen to the dire. But they killed it before anything happened. So I felt at this point, I don't know if I was going to get enough money to get all of this in time before the game ended. I was like, ah, I'll resign myself to getting all the wards. I'm just kind of a guy who stuns if I get lucky with attacks to stun some more, maybe I'll put this on some people. I'm just going to run around and try to deward as best I can. Radiant structures are fortified. I felt like somebody was fighting over here, but they got away before we were actually able to get vision on them. I go back for a rune because I can kind of be away, and if they actually do commit anybody, I'll charge right in. So he is leading the charge, and then I dove right into a chain frost again. And that was a really good stun from his uh, Chen Creep and trying to get away. But I have some help here. I'm going to charge back. Got all three of them there. And then he's able to clean it up before they're able to react. Going to back up again. Wait for me to get on this come off cooldown again. And think about if we're willing to commit to this. There's 4v. It would be 2, so we back off. I mean, I could run in and hopefully get some bash, but there's enough people around whoever I'm attacking that are going to kill me before it makes any sense. So you kind of have to sit there and eyeball, okay, I'll hang back again, wait for my stuff to get off cooldown, run back in, charge them all, stun them, see if we can't kill anybody while they're immobile. But if that can't happen, you back off because you don't want to start feeding kills as best you can. And... They were able to, I charged in, but there was no way that I was going to get there before she died. So at this point, I have 31 of the 37. That's a pretty good ratio. You can't really do too much more on a sort of yanking support like Spirit Breaker is. You try to be in as many kills as you can to at least be useful to your team. I'm going to hang back. Oh, he is almost... He was able to get his ult off, but... He was in trouble, so I was thinking, maybe I'll charge in if they actually commit more to him just to actually help him get away. And if I die, it's better that I die than he does. Back off again. I was like, I'll go top. And then I picked a thing. Free TP. And yeah, this is a bad idea. to char I'm charging right across real, I guess, main thoroughfares, you can call it in the game. Where if anybody was mid here and I charged up to gank somebody here, they would totally see me just zoom across the screen. And I get all this free gold and EXP up here. If I can actually end the last hits. I missed that one. I just ignored that one completely. Everybody else on the map is kind of bunched up. They don't have any wards up. They don't see what they're doing. I'm the only one showing up here just so I can get some EXP and levels. Uh, EXP is levels. EXP and gold, excuse me. So, killed that lane again. I'm going to back off. So I don't want to show anymore. So if they actually do decide to commit. But you see, they're all just bunched in the map here. Because we've suffocated. They have no more towers. They really can't go out. Because we have real mobile uh, characters, uh, heroes on our team. That if they try to go out and farm a creep lane in any way. They'll instantly get it jumped on. Chen tried a few times. Yes, they got some kills off of that, but it just 
they're not going to get lucky every time. They're pushing out a little bit. They put some wards down. Uh, Invoker, uh, Wraith King's leading the way. Just pushing down mid. I'm showing again here. I mean, there are they were bunched here, so this may be a bit too aggressive. But I'm backing off. I'm going to watch the map to see if we go on anybody. We did see Wraith King there. Are we going to go on him? Uh, I should have my... Well, I was too busy trying to get gold. I don't know why I'm backing up. Well, I guess it was good that I didn't do anything. I mean, he's super mobile. If he watch, wants to actually go out and attack anybody, he can kind of do it without any sort of issue. But, hmm. If I try to commit like he did, they were all bunched there and I might have died. But another really good item that will interrupt a charge from Spirit Breakers, if you actually have the Yules here, you cast it on. That's a real small area to cast in. If you're super, like, you're running away, you still have to turn around with your character and cast it. And in that time, I could still land and hit you. That's why if I ended up getting to level 25 in this game and I did 500 charge speed, he's running away and tries to turn around and cast it on me. I'm hitting him before he has any chance to actually turn around. So in that case, it might be better for him to actually cast it on himself. But then if that happens, I could still land my ultimate on him and just hopefully have the rest of my team there to lock him in place. So we're grouping up here to, I believe, push a tower. We do we do not have Lena with us, but or any of our damage dealers except Legion. Just farming their jungle so they can't keep them within their base so they're not able to farm, get levels, get items. We don't have much in the way of wards. That's something I should be doing. Oh, I did actually end up getting this. I played this a couple of days ago. I don't remember exactly how the what items I got when were. But whenever I go into a fight, I can either, after I charge through somebody and I lay my stun, I can turn around, cast it on him, cast it on her. I could even do it on a Vogar if I want to stop them from being able to attack because I don't think any of them have... Well, she does. He does not. He got a really terrible build here. And he doesn't either. He usually doesn't buy BKB, so... I can cast this on a couple of people. They're going to be completely useless except for maybe a stun for five seconds. And in that time, we can stop, just lock them down. So I'm just checking some items here. We're, oh, we got, I did see him. I don't know why he came out here. He didn't really have much backup, but we didn't have any detection either, so he could easily get away. Although he hung around here. Oh, she had a Lotus Orb, which reflects spells. Directly cast it on her, but she might be dead here. I dis probably should have disarmed uh, Wraith King instead, but the only one I think I had in range. No, I probably could have done it on him instead of Invoker. I thought I might have been cheeky and cast it on him because somehow maybe I felt he did more damage, but that's really dumb. But she was pretty much dead regardless. So they're still stuck in base. There's very little they can do unless they feel ambitious and get out. We kind of have war. We should have one in this area to watch to see if they're coming out. But they get pushed to one side of their base and we come down to another, but she stayed way too long. And then we back out again and we just wait till we have more people up to actually go back at the base again. So at this point I felt we got zero warding over here. I'm going to ward so we can make sure to keep them within their base here, but we're down to, if they actually decide to push like they are right now, we're not going to be able to stop it. So I'm going to charge in. And do we get anybody? Yeah, we do get some people coming in. She casts that uh, orb on me. Just distraction. Dis disruptive as best they can. They stayed way too long at the duel off. And now I'm going to heal back up again. Hang in the back, so if they do come at us... Okay, I saw that get cast. I'm going way behind to go after him. And He's gotten Viz. I detected, so now I'm going to try to bash him back towards everybody, but I got disarmed and then stunned, and then I'm dead. <laughs> and in the meantime, my entire team was able to 
shut him down. So I just was disruptive. I kept anyone from their team being able to support him. He was way out in front of the rest of his group, and he died. So, yeah, I guess you could say I did a great thing. I disrupted their team from supporting their carry. She melted way too fast because she stayed way at the tower way too long. And now we're just... All the rest of our damage is up. I mean, he stayed chased and got killed, locked down. He probably should have just stuck at the... Uh, Objectives got the barracks and the towers, but he felt like going after people. So now everyone else on here stayed way too long, and then I mean you can cast BKB, but it doesn't stop you from his right clicks because at a certain point his get pretty strong. But played a really good distraction, and then you'll see at this point she has a teleport scroll in her backpack. At any point she could have put it on one of her other items and then actually casted this and they wouldn't have been able to do anything to her but she didn't got one of the barracks out of it maybe was a bit too committed to it but we did some pretty good damage there we got an entire lane of barracks and we got I believe the ranged and one other and now it's just sit and wait to see they're probably going to Get that mid tower. I'm waiting for a teleport. I probably could just charge to a lane. Doesn't doesn't matter. This was just kind of a waste. This should make my life easier. I have my wards up. I should. They're definitely gonna get that tower. There's no way that's gonna happen. And that was their first tower they ever had in 44 minutes of the game, which pretty impressive that we were able to shut them down this much. I'm waiting for anybody else to teleport in to see if we can actually go on the guy that's another usual good sign for anybody if they're pushing a tower by themselves the second that that fortification comes out they get right out but again he stayed too long I'm going to wait until he's on the ground I charged the wrong thing but it doesn't matter because he just stood there long enough that I can do this he should have probably had a bit more wherewithal to get out but he didn't as you see he has the movement speed that gets him to like 600 movement speed it's insane you see how fat he runs around like a spaz that'll be what i look like if i ever got level 25 but i didn't so now i'm hanging back seeing if there's anybody that pushed a little too far out that we can kill i mean he was out here by himself but i didn't have i did have detection she didn't go on him i probably could have said hey let's go on him pinged it a bit to see if that would have got her attention but it didn't putting wards down to protect if they go on us trying to get the Roshan this has the most coverage from either side here because they still have the fountain here they can teleport to this but crystal main I think is going to just plink at it for now yeah but yeah, double damage he is just melting now because she is casting super fast or ca attacking super fast that's why she's like randomly casting spells for no reason. Every time she casts a spell, she does way more damage. I picked up the cheese. She gets the immortality. So this just gives you instantly 2,500 health and mana, which almost is my entire health pool and clearly all of my mana pool. So now I'm looking for some decent warding spots just to cover either one of the lanes they come through. Probably it would have made more sense to put it down here, but... It, didn't matter he dives in kill him so now I'm gonna I disarmed him so he can't do anything so I'm gonna get Dovant and try to get the most value out of the cheese kept him away cat see how large that cast range is and now he's just hold her in place she won't be able to get back to the rest of their team to help them not die just disrupted her from able to actually help her team bunch of stuns locked down she wasn't able to do much and the rest of our team just cleaned house. He ran away. And, yep, he, the tornado stopped me from being able to land my charge. Any sort of movement ability that an item can give you or an ability you have. Like a vacuum. A stun in any way. And, got it. Got lucky with that bash on that head, I believe. But now it's just playing clean up at this point. The game is pretty much over. 
And he had a cheese from a different fight because after the second time you kill Roshan, you get the cheese and Aegis. I'm going to hang back. Okay, they're going to go on him. Now I'm going to charge to protect. Missed with the deafening blast. He blinked away. I'm backing off. I'm going to heal him again. And at this point, maybe he should back out because he's real easily killed. But Lena's moving down to help. And now it's just clean up. Gonna get the rest of the towers, and the game is pretty much over. And then I got stunned before I was able to land. Oh, that's how. And then I disarmed him. He saw. Oh, I can't do shit. And now I just knock him back into our team. But uh, pointers again. Uh, the great, the best chance you have to win with this character is to talk to your team. Either ping it out, type it out, talk to, use your headset. Communication is going to help you win the games, and that stupid Chain Frost. Does it bounce back to me? No, I die anyway. Always be looking at the map. Talk to your teammates. If you have at least two other... If you have two other stuns, it's basically over. There's no way that whoever you're fighting, unless it's a Weaver, gets away. But having at least one other stun besides you is definitely going to help you. And now he has the Agonims, which makes that stupid chain thing bounce non-stop until it runs out of things to attack. But Spearbreaker is a great character. He's a lot of fun to play. Just always be talking with different people on your team if you want to be successful with them. Uh, thank you all for watching. If you have any suggestions for heroes you'd like me to play or give real basic tips or guidelines on how to play them, uh, just leave it in the comments below. But thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.